One clear trend that we're seeing in Boston, and I think the same can be said about most cities in the United States, is that people are migrating out of the city and into the suburbs. COVID has is, is brought on a lot of fatigue. You know, guidelines have been set by governments in terms of social uh, distancing um, and just generally making it, it tough for families to get out and about. Um, and if you live in the city, that can, can really put a lot of stress on your family. And I think what you're seeing is people are deciding they want to have a bigger space. They're opting to, to spend a little bit more or, or maybe not even spend a little bit more, but move out of the city, be able to have a yard. And that's playing out in Boston as we speak. You know, the greater Boston market right now is, in fact, at a five year low in terms of inventory, um, whereas, you know, inner city, you know, condominiums have reached a five year high in terms of inventory. So it's, it's pretty clear right now that you're seeing people leave the city, they want more space. Um, and, and it's interesting because not too long ago, we were talking about micro housing and how people wanted to, to have a smaller footprint and, and, and live in these small structures. And, and, and COVID seemed to have just changed everything in that regard. Um, you know, further evidence is, is that fact that, uh, you know, Redfin is reporting that the average home in the greater Boston market is selling at about ask and is only on the market for 23 days. So that clearly highlights the demand um, and, and quite honestly, the supply imbalance that, uh, that we're seeing. And I think what you're gonna find is that, you know, builders are recognizing this trend and they're gonna start to try to build more housing. So um, I'm hoping that, you know, Boston uh, and, the, and the cities can start to move permitting process through a little bit faster and create more of an opportunity for builders to, um, to, to deliver more supply. You know, one Boston market I think is worth noting is Medford. Uh, closed a loan in Medford in, uh, in September. And, um, you know, from what I'm hearing and seeing, it seems like Medford is benefiting from a little bit of urban sprawl. Again, folks looking for a little bit more room and quite honestly, probably investors and end buyers being priced out of Somerville. Um, there also is, uh, you know, a lack of inventory in Somerville as it relates to the, you know, condo conversion ordinance. So I think you're, you're seeing a lot more activity go a little bit further away from the city and, and Medford's benefiting. Uh, in fact, you know, Medford's seen nearly a 5% increase in home prices from the previous year with homes selling at an average of 618,000 and spending just 19 days on the market. Um, obviously, um, you know, those are strong numbers for Medford uh, historically. So uh, investors, you know, keep an eye out for Medford. Um, I know my borrowers are, and I think that, um, you know, uh, asset-based lending will be making a lot of loans in uh, Medford in, in 2021. One of the things I think real estate investors in the Boston market and pretty much any market, uh, especially in the city, should be wary of is, you know, just the unprecedented stress that COVID-19 has put on landlords. You know, um, I think it was up until October 17th, there was a moratorium on both evictions and foreclosures. So, you know, as evictions start to occur, you're going to start to see, you know, properties go vacant, um, especially without the federal uh, stimulus. Um, you know, properties are going to go vacant. You know, that's going to put more pressure on, on landlords uh, and their ability to make mortgage payments. And I think you're going to start to really see a flow of foreclosure activity uh, hit the market in the in the first, second quarter of, of 2021. You know, obviously that could change as it relates to, you know, uh, I guess additional moratoriums or government intervention, whether it be stimulus, uh, et cetera. But uh, at the end of the day, if, if things stay the same, I think you're going to start to see, um, you know, asset-based lending investors, borrowers, taking advantage of a little bit more distress in the market to be able to come in, come to us for fast financing in order to close on, um, you know, some, you know, REO properties, uh, you know, properties taken back by the bank and, and looking for a quick sale. Um, so, you know, we're looking for the multifamily market to reset a little bit, um, you know, which offers opportunity. Clearly, it's not all good news, obviously, but um, I definitely think it's something that, you uh, you know, investors, um, you know, multifamily operators should be, you know, looking at as, as 2021 rolls around.